Hey guys, talking about fluoride today. I've been asked about this a lot over the years, fair amount over the years. Uh, it's not too surprising since seemingly a fair number of vegans are anti-fluoride, anti-chemicals in general. So I decided to go with this article on Mercola.com, 10 Facts About Fluoride You Need to Know. Uh, it's by Michael Conant of Fluoride Action Network. It's pretty popular and it covers pretty much all of the um, anti-fluoride claims, particularly when it comes to fluoridated water. Most developed countries do not fluoridate their water, and this is actually true. For instance, in Europe, only about 2% of the population drinks artificially fluoridated water. But this doesn't mean that fluoride or fluoridated water isn't an effective treatment for preventing cavities. It just means that some areas have chosen not to fluoridate the community water supply, and sometimes for legitimate reasons. Like in Hong Kong and India, where they already have naturally fluoridated water. And in fact, in India, the fluoride levels are so high that they have installed reverse osmosis plants to lower the fluoride levels. So essentially, this is the same argument that's used by a lot of anti-GMO advocates that, hey, the EU has banned GM, which is not actually true. It's kind of whatever. I don't want to talk about GMO, but it's the same sort of argument that somehow because some countries have done dumb things, or it's sometimes legitimate things, they just have different policies, then it somehow means that the science on GM tech or fluoride and fluoridated water is invalid. No. Fluoridated countries do not have less tooth decay than non-fluoridated countries. According to the World Health Organization, there is no discernible difference in tooth decay between developed countries that fluoridate their water and those that do not. No references, which is pretty typical for stuff like this. And to be frank, I find it hard to believe considering statements like this from the World Health Organization on their website, on their page, inadequate or excess fluoride. Fluoride intake has both beneficial effects in reducing the incidence of dental caries and negative effects in causing enamel and skeletal fluorosis following prolonged high exposure. Public health actions are needed to provide sufficient fluoride intake in areas where this is lacking so as to minimize tooth decay. So basically, the World Health Organization is not anti-fluoride or fluoridated water. Not at all. As far as the claim, essentially, that fluoridated water is ineffective, that it's not effective at preventing tooth decay, that is not what the evidence shows. Studies consistently show an inverse correlation between fluoridated water and tooth decay. This 2015 review has been taken out of context to no end by anti-fluoride folks like Conant, but it ultimately comes to the same conclusion regarding the effectiveness of fluoride. Specifically, they found a 35% reduction in baby teeth and a 26% reduction in permanent teeth. I've included more links in the description on the Cochrane review and some critiques of the review, uh, specifically the process they used for choosing studies, and some other links as well that are related to the Cochrane review. So check those out if you are interested. Sure, there are anomalies, you know, populations that don't drink artificially fluoridated water, but they have lower than average levels of tooth decay of dental caries. But this doesn't mean that fluoride or fluoridated water isn't effective at preventing tooth decay. The problem here is that this is a really, really hard thing to study because there are just so many different factors at play, so many different things that affect teeth health, dental hygiene, of course, uh, other sources of fluoride, so toothpaste, mouthwash, but also food. Tea is actually a pretty good source of fluoride. And again, water, water that is naturally fluoridated. Diet in general, so you know, sugar consumption, uh, calcium and vitamin D intake, and even social and economic status. Poorer populations are more at risk for dental caries. No one is arguing that fluoridating the water will completely eradicate cavities. You could drink fluoridated water from birth and still end up with tons of cavities if you eat sugar all day, if you don't practice good dental hygiene, or if you just have shit genetics when it comes to your teeth. But there is no doubt that adding fluoride to water with naturally low levels is one effective tool for preventing tooth decay, for helping to reduce the instances of tooth decay, especially for disadvantaged groups. Fluoride affects many tissues in your body besides your teeth. 
And they cite this review that supposedly shows fluoride to be incredibly dangerous, that it affects your bones, your brain, your thyroid gland, pineal gland, and even your blood sugar levels. It's true that fluoride can be very dangerous. I mentioned India earlier and how they have had to install reverse osmosis plants to remove some of the naturally occurring fluoride in their water. The reason they do this is because fluoride ingestion at a certain level can cause a bone disease called skeletal fluorosis. Again, at a certain level. We are talking about very high levels of fluoride, much higher than what the EPA recommends. No state or country with artificially fluoridated water has levels anywhere near that of India. And so it's no surprise that the review does not support the implication that fluoride is dangerous at any level. They do call for more studies on levels greater than one, although it's important to note that the recommended level is less than that at 0.7, and the majority of US citizens on public water systems receive that concentration. If you want to check your county's level, you can do so here at the CDC, cdc.gov. I've included the link in the description. So number four, fluoride is not a natural process. They claim that fluoridation advocates point to the fact that fluoride occurs in nature as proof that it's safe and that this is wrong because lots of natural things are unsafe. This is true, and if fluoride advocates are actually doing this, saying that fluoride is safe because it's natural, they should stop. But to be clear, I've never actually seen this. The people advocating for fluoride tend to be pretty science-minded, logic-minded. They tend to know that natural does not equal good. And also they tend to know that high levels of naturally occurring fluoride can be very, very dangerous, is not a good thing. So then they also claim that the fluoride used isn't actually natural and that it may increase the risk for cancer. But big surprise, there's no good evidence for this. So number five, 40% of American teenagers show visible signs of fluoride overexposure. And this is actually true, or at least it was true from 1999 to 2004, but context is important. Contrary to what Mercola and Fluoride Action Network say, this is mostly a cosmetic concern. The vast majority of cases were mild or very mild, which is not dangerous. It's just slightly unattractive. Only 2% of cases were moderate and less than 1% severe. In any event, this data did result in the HHS lowering recommendations for the amount of fluoride in drinking water to 0.7 instead of a range of 0.7 to 1.2. And this is because most of us are getting more fluoride from other sources, namely toothpaste and mouthwash that contain fluoride, so we just don't need as much from our water supply. Number six, for infants, fluoridated water provides no benefits, only risks. It is true that giving fluoridated water to infants isn't necessary, but it's absolutely false that this is harmful. It may cause mild fluorosis, but again, that's a cosmetic issue. They then go on to cite the infamous Harvard review that showed children who live in areas with highly fluoridated water have significantly lower IQ scores than those who live in low fluoride areas. Now, technically this is true. The study did find a negative correlation between high fluoride levels in the water and lower IQ. But the implication here that the US has high levels of fluoride in the water is not. In fact, this study had virtually nothing to do with America, since the vast majority of the studies reviewed were on Chinese populations, with fluoride levels up to 11.5 parts per million in drinking water. Snopes goes into much more detail here on this review and on just the whole fluoride IQ thing, so if you're interested, I've linked to it in the description. Number seven, fluoride supplements have never been approved by the FDA. I'm sorry, but since when does Mercola care about the FDA? The FDA exposed. FDA is pharma's lapdog, not a watchdog. Maybe they were just looking for another fact to add. I guess nine fluoride facts just isn't as engaging as 10. In all seriousness, this is actually a common claim. If you Google FDA fluoride supplements, you will see all manner of petitions and whatnot claiming that the FDA does not support fluoride supplements. Spoiler, they do. Right here under Title 21, Part 355, it says who fluoride supplements can be provided to, healthcare professionals only, and what the dosage can be. The FDA did issue a warning letter to Kirkman Laboratories regarding their fluoride drops and tablets, but that was only due to improper labeling. But still, I, I am confused as to why this was brought up here. Why fluoride supplements? This is not something that most people will ever use. It's only, again, available via prescription, and it's only for special cases. 
just just ha- have to get to number 10. Gotta have 10. Nine just seems wrong. Number eight, fluoride is the only medicine added to public water. The informed consent argument. This is the sticking point for a lot of people, even people who believe that fluoridated water is good and is actually preventative. They're not anti-fluoride. They just don't like the idea of forcing it on people. First, civilization is predicated on force, on forcing people to do stuff or not to do stuff. You are forced to pay taxes. You are forced not to kill people. Obviously, you can do these things, but there will be consequences. Second, informed consent doesn't apply to fluoridated water. Certain consumer groups advocate disclosure of each and every metal and chemical our bodies are exposed to each day, regardless of whether scientific evidence indicates a risk of harm. Where do we draw the line on information? The law draws the line when we approach significant or material risk. Granted, this line is not always straight and clear, but it is fairly easy to conclude that without valid scientific evidence of a significant or material risk of harm, informed consent simply does not apply. And finally, you can still avoid fluoridated water if you really want to, even if your water supply is artificially fluoridated. Just get a reverse osmosis system. Expensive? Yeah. Pain in the ass? Yeah. But I don't really care. To be honest, I am much less concerned with some obsession with freedom to choose than I am with kids suffering with tooth decay. Fluoridated water is an easy and cheap way to help prevent that suffering. Number nine, swallowing fluoride provides little benefit to teeth. It is now widely recognized that fluoride's only justifiable benefit comes from topical contact with teeth, which even the CDC has acknowledged. No reference, but I did find one at Fluoride Action Network. According to the CDC, fluoride prevents dental caries predominantly after eruption of the tooth into the mouth, and its actions primarily are topical for both adults and children. So again, we have a technically true statement, but a ridiculous implication. The CDC did say that the primary action of fluoride is topical, but the implication that this invalidates the argument for fluoridated water, or that the CDC specifically does not support fluoridated water, is nonsense. From the CDC, both drinking water and toothpaste with fluoride provide important and complementary benefits. Fluoridated water keeps a low level of fluoride in saliva and dental plaque all day. The much higher concentration of fluoride in toothpaste offers additional benefit. Fluoride slows the activity of bacteria that cause decay and combines with enamel on the tooth surface to make it stronger and better able to resist decay. Together, the two sources offer more protection than using either one alone. Community water fluoridation has been identified as the most cost-effective method of delivering fluoride to all members of the community regardless of age, educational attainment, income level, and the availability of dental care. In studies conducted after other fluoride products, such as toothpaste, were widely available, scientists found additional reductions in tooth decay, up to 25%, among people with community water fluoridation as compared to those without fluoridation. In other words, brushing with fluoridated toothpaste and drinking fluoridated water together is beneficial and recommended by the CDC. And finally, number 10 disadvantaged communities are the most disadvantaged by fluoride. They go on, fluoride toxicity is exacerbated by conditions that occur much more frequently in low-income areas. Implying that fluoride toxicity is a concern in the U.S., in other places like India, absolutely, but not here. Again, severe dental fluorosis is incredibly rare, and skeletal fluorosis is virtually unheard of. Unless you decide to drink a pitcher of tea made from 100 to 150 tea bags every day for 17 years. Please don't do that. Fluorosis is not the concern here. Tooth decay is, and poorer populations are at higher risk. One way to help is to fluoridate the water, which again, is incredibly cheap. Now, would it be great if we could do more? You know, if we could also provide free and regular dental care for people? Absolutely, and some progressive states like Oregon, they already do this for those on Medicaid. But there's no question that this is much more expensive and harder to achieve. I mean, we're currently dealing with people in positions of power who don't know how insurance works. So pick your battles. 
So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Comments and questions, of course, down below. If you want to subscribe, that's totally cool. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Thanks again, and I will have a new video very soon. Snoops go- Snoops. <laughs>